Oh my God, I saw this in a dream. The north side of this building opens to both the Carnegie Museum of Art and the Carnegie Museum of Natural History, both accessible from the lobby space. Several years ago I saw this arrangement, black shallow stairs descending to a fountain and a set of glass doors. The only difference was that the gift store in the vision was immediately past the entrance, while here it is just to my right. Learning through dreams was an important talent handed down to my mother's lineage from the Cora of Mexico, one of many Native American groups that teach this experience. At other times I have done a double take from these moments of uncanny clairvoyance, such as in my episode on the Maya Museum in Cancun. They tell me that valuable insights will be coming. If you remember seeing a place you'd only dreamt of before, comment how it felt. This chilly morning in December 2023 started my first real visit to Pittsburgh, so I had never before ventured into this museum complex. I will be posting a series of shorts from my adventures within. So let's explore the museums and discover what they hold. Could wild jaguars return to the United States? At the Carnegie Museum of Natural History, this jaguar family is sharing a fresh iguana for two of their cubs. It was deliberately presented in a desert diorama to remind visitors that these powerful predators, indeed the largest wildcats in the Americas, were once common to the deserts of the American Southwest. According to Panthera.org, jaguars used to inhabit all the states bordering Mexico and even reached as far as Louisiana, but excessive hunting has extinguished most of these populations. They have been recently sighted near the border, meaning that some are returning into the U.S. from Mexico. Whether these could remain in the country as viable, reproducing populations remains an open question. The jaguar's remarkable adaptability, which has enabled it to thrive from the Sonora Desert to the Amazon rainforest, advantages its resettlement into the southern U.S. Even native myths from the Maya and the Amazon acknowledge the jaguar's mobility across the watery underworld, the Earth's surface, and the celestial constellations. The jaguar is a creature truly adept in all realms. This unassuming rock came from Mars. Until now, I would have never imagined the invitation to touch a relic from this heavenly body. A jolt of energy surged through my fingers upon contact, not of the electromagnetic sort, but rather toward the psychic spectrum, which tickled my nerves. It was at the Carnegie Museum of Natural History in Pittsburgh. This cosmic fragment was once part of the red planet that the ancient Maya may have related with myths about monkeys, especially tales of the monkey twins who had once been master artists and scribes. I thus reflect how the shock could have come from the two magical writers to charge my own musings on the videos I had taken here. What is a kachina? In native southwestern myth, a kachina is a being for the beginning of the current age, when they emerged with humanity from the worlds of the previous ages below. They mediate the worlds of man and the worlds beyond by delivering prayers from humankind to the spirits, whose powers may yield abundant rains in life. Kachinas are common to the Pueblo peoples of Arizona and New Mexico. They have been in the southwest for almost 700 years, as theorized from evidence of both ceramic designs in the western Pueblo area and rock art in the east. Kachinas evolved to meet new circumstances and conditions, but their intercession remains the same. Kachina can mean the spiritual being, the image represented in the famous dolls, or even the person dressed in costume and mask to personify its power. This colorful assemblage is at the Carnegie Museum of Natural History. Its faces humanize the natural phenomena, wildlife species, and cultural artifacts pertinent to Hopi lifeways. The next episode will delve further into the ethnic diversity from which the Kachina cult emerged and how it relates to the goals of this channel. How is the Kachina tradition of the Southwest like the Eye of the Serpent Channel? Both began from shared spiritual beliefs within Native American diversity. At the Carnegie Museum of Natural History, this hallway presents arts and practices of the Hopi, the westernmost of today's 12 Pueblo nations. Hopi Kachinas are among the most studied and renowned Native artistic traditions for their symbolism, intricacy, and evolution. 
The Hopi recognized the foreign origins of many kachinas integrated into their pantheon from Navajo, Zuni, Tano, and other societies. Archaeologists suggest that the Kachina tradition emerged since the 14th century, when ancient pueblos were booming from an influx of surrounding peoples. Distinct Kachina designs could then represent these ethnic backgrounds in the Pueblo Plaza for communal ceremonies. The Eye of the Serpent Channel was likewise born from a convergence of cultures, its purpose to explore common thoughts and workings from across the hemisphere's native nations. The next episode concludes this Carnegie series with an exemplar of this mission in today's mask. Today's mask adorns a Palulukang Kachina, the water serpent of the Hopi Pueblo of Arizona. From the dozens of Kachinas on display at the Carnegie Museum of Natural History, this was my choice for concluding the museum series for its special relevance to the channel. This Kachina doll gives a human face to the great serpent of Hopi myth. In Hopi rituals documented by Jesse Walter Fuchs, dancers carried large effigies of the being in its serpent form to bring rains for their corn agriculture. Such effigies also bore feathers and fanned crests behind the head. Here then is the Hopi version of the feathered serpent, a sacred being that has appeared in native art and myth from Ohio to the Amazon. As of today's mask installment, this Kachina doll is an opulent expression of native concepts reaching far across the Americas. Such examples lend faces to the principles and beliefs that bridge the indigenous cultures from North to South America. Please like, share, and subscribe to the Eye of the Serpent channel. Your support goes toward travel, research, and production. Thank you for watching, and good roads.